Hi everyone, it's Guilherme and in this video we are going to create a scene that's going to be able to detect horizontal and vertical gestures. You can then use this scene anywhere in your game to either control your characters or also use it in UI elements. And if you'd like to follow along, please open Godot now and create a new project or scene in an already existing project. So the first thing we're going to do is add a new node to our scene and this node is of type node. We can rename this node to swipe detector. And you're going to need one child, which is going to be of type timer. So add as a child of our swipe detector, a timer node. And in its inspector, we can check one shot to true. Now we're going to create a script for our swipe detector. So select the swipe detector and click on attach script. I'm going to change my template to no comments. And I'm going to click on create. And now before I get started here, I'll go back to our timer, select its signal, and I'm going to connect the timeout signal of the timer to our swipe detector. And this is going to create a new function called on timer timeout. All right, so now we can start creating the signals and variables that we're going to need for our script. The first signal is going to be called swiped. And as you can imagine, it's going to be emitted every time we detect a swipe. And along with the signal, we're going to also pass the direction. Another signal is going to be the swipe cancel, which is going to be emitted every time that a swipe fails, for instance, when it times out. And we're going to also pass its start position. We're going to export a variable, it's going to be of type float, and it's going to go from 1 to 1.5. It's going to be called the max diagonal slope. You're going to initialize it with a value of 1.3. This variable is going to be used to detect if a swipe was diagonal. And you can also tweak its value to make it more or less tolerant to diagonal swipes. We're then going to get a reference to our timer. And we're going to need a variable to store the initial position of our pipes. It's going to be a type vector tube. We are not going to need the ready function, so we can rename this to input and put the event variable inside of it. And the input function is called every time that the engine detects an input. It can range from anything like moving your mouse to typing in the keyboard. And because we only want to detect screen touch events, we are going to first check if the event is not of type input event screen touch and if it is not a screen touch we are just going to return from the function now if we got here this means that this event is indeed a screen touch and we have to check if it is a pressed event this means that the player just touched the screen so he is starting a swipe and if it is, this is the case, we're going to call a function that we haven't created yet, which is going to be called start detection. And we're going to pass to it the position of this event. But if it's not of type pressed, we're going to check if our timer is stopped. As our timer is going to be used to detect if a swipe has timed out, if it's not stopped, this means that the swipe hasn't timed out. And if that's the case, we can then call end detection. And again, we're going to pass to it the position of this event. Now we're going to create our start detection function. Here we're going to need the position as a parameter. And we are only going to do two things inside of this function. The first one is going to be to set our swipe start position to be equal to the position that we just received. And the second one is going to be to start our timer. Now in the end detection function, we're also going to need the position here. The first thing we're going to do is stop our timer. This way we don't time out. And now we have to calculate the direction of our swipe. We're going to start this calculation in a variable called direction. 
and we are going to calculate this by subtracting from our position the value of swipe start position. This is going to return a vector 2 to us and we are going to call normalized on the result of this calculation to get a vector 2 that has values from 0 to 1 in both axes. Now we have to check if our swipe is diagonal. And to do so, we are going to add both the absolute values of our direction, so direction x plus the absolute value of direction y. And keep in mind that an absolute value is, in short, a value that is always positive. So if we got a negative value here in the x or in the y, we are now having the same value but as a positive. And we're going to check if the value of direction x plus direction y is greater or equal to our max diagonal slope, which is the variable that we exported before. And if it is, we are going to return from the function. But if we got to this point, this means that we have a valid swipe. All we, what's left to do is to get its direction and emit our signal. So we're going to check if the absolute value of direction x is greater than the absolute value of direction y. If it is, this means that we have a horizontal swipe, which is either to the left or to the right. If it is a horizontal swipe, we're going to emit signal. In this case, the swiped signal. And we're going to pass as a parameter a vector 2, which in the x axis will have a value of either 1 or minus 1. And to determine if it is a positive or a negative value, we're going to first put a minus, then we're going to call sign, which is going to get the sign of the value that we pass to it. In this case, the direction dot x. And for the y value, we're going to pass 0. The reason why we have this minus sign in front of our sign direction x here is because think that when you're swiping from the center of the screen to the right, you're actually making the camera move to the left. And to have this vector 2 to represent that we are swiping to the right, we have to invert the direction x, which would have the value of minus 1 in this case to have the value of 1, which then signalizes, which then represents a movement to the right. But if we are dealing with a vertical swipe, we do almost the same thing that we did with the horizontal one, but in this case, instead of using minus sign x on the x-axis, we're going to use minus direction y in the y-axis. And lastly, in our on-timer timeout, we are just going to emit our swipe cancel signal along with its start position. And that's it. Our script is done. We can already save this scene. And you can then use this scene and connect its signals to your other nodes to make all kinds of interactions with swipe events. The last thing you should keep in mind is that if you want to tweak the duration of a timeout, you can go to your timer and in the inspector, you can change the wait time. I feel like one second is too much, so I'm going to change this to 0 0.15, which is a value that is okay, at least for me. And I'm going to save the scene again. And now, just to give you an example of our script working, I have the Godot 3 presentation project here open, and I'm going to play the power pitch scene by pressing F6. And just to prove you that this is working, I'm going to turn my webcam on. Now you can see me recording, and I'm going to use my finger to touch on the screen. I have a touchscreen laptop, and I'm going to start swiping. And as you can see, the slides start to go from the previous to the next one and from the next one to the previous one. And if we go back to the project, we can see that this is all done using the swipe detector scene by connecting the swiped signal 
to a responsible script that is going to go to the previous or to the next slide. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them on the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.